NATO recently partnered with cyber defense firm CloudMask in order to help secure sensitive data for Tech Republic and ZDNet. I'm Dan Patterson, and we're speaking today with Jacques Philippot. He is the VP of Sales and Marketing at CloudMask about what government organizations, NGOs, and companies can learn from how NATO secures sensitive data. Uh, Jacques, thank you very much for your time today. I wonder if you could first tell me a little bit about how CloudMask's technology works and the partnership with NATO. Well, thank you, Dan. A pleasure being with you. Uh, a little bit about CloudMask is uh, we take the approach of a data-centric view of protecting data. Uh, traditionally, a lot of uh, organizations have done the per perimeter defense, which is a protect all and then you know risk all approach. Our approach is basically from the moment data is created, why not protect it from that endpoint and basically have kind of a very reduced attack surface. So rather than kind of risking all similar to what we saw with Equifax breach, the only risk will be limited to the information that that person had the privilege of creating and knowing. So now the, the attack service is greatly reduced uh, and hence greater protection to the organization. How can companies uh, start compartmentalizing organizations like that? Well, one of the things that uh, a lot of organizations have put more thought into is the idea of a data dictionary is when you have kind of, you know, security by design and security by default is when you capture information, how is it going to be used? What is its purpose? And start defining its use of that particular, you know, data. So that could be PI, it could be anything else. Uh, but organizations need to go from the moment that they want that information to be created, now look at its life cycle and how is it going to be used by the rest of the organization. Uh, so again, you know, a lot of companies just collect and then once they have collected all the information, they wonder what they need to do with it. With a big organization <laughs> like uh, NATO, you have legacy data. How best should an organization look at their, their past and present and use that to not just secure that data, but plan for the future? Well, the big part is, you know, when you're looking at legacy systems is why do you have it? Why do you need to keep it? And then how can you overlay protection on top of it, which is one of our key benefits is we're non-intrusive. Uh, we layer on top of an existing application without any modification. And that was one of the key benefits for an organization such as NATO or many other government organizations is how can I add protection without having to redo a lot of the app development. And as we know, a lot of companies you know money and budgets is a significant concern. And anytime you want to touch a, a legacy application, you might as well be asking them to pulling their teeth out. So I, I love the idea of asking your organization what's important. Uh, the next step is um, uh, prioritizing levels of importance. It may be fine to toss bad or old data, but how do I determine what data is important and, and uh, what will really be helpful in the future of my organization versus the stuff that's easy to toss? Well, what, what's important is take, the organization needs to step, take a step back and look, what is the mission of the organization? What is its purpose? And then after that, you kind of go from that center, which is that is your most important critical data. And then you layer out. Um, governments typically have kind of, you know, a risk factor. You know, in government, they'll have something like protected A, B, and C. A kind of being kind of minimal protection. And then higher up, and of course, in the NATO world, you, know, you have NATO, five size, cosmic protection, which is, again, you know, what is the information? What is the importance? And most importantly, for kind of security bound organization, what's the impact as if this information was leaked? You know, will it just simply embarrass government or is there a potential loss of life or kind of serious economic harm? And uh, as we can see right now, there's many state organizations that are players in the cybersecurity area or threats to the cybersecurity world and, you know, significant impact on the world be it kind of in elections or other economic factors. And finally, um, 
going back to the idea of security by default or security by design, we also then have to uh, almost assume that a data breach will happen at some point. What are the best ways to respond to a breach? Well, kind of, again, having to look at, you know, what is that information that you collected and then, you know, who needs to be warned and in what timely manner? Uh, obviously, in the case of like a Equifax breach, you know, there's impact to, you know, 140 odd million users. You know, it should be timely because this is another example of time is of the essence. The longer you wait, the more these malicious, malicious actors can benefit from that breach. Uh, so if you wait a month, if you wait two months, then, you know, they have unimpeded access to the data they've stolen and now can reap, you know, the benefit of that. I've seen organizations withhold, you know, a breach for over a year. In the meantime, other state nations were benefiting the economic advantage of getting that breach. Holding back is actually a misguided approach. Jacques Philippot is the VP of Sales and Marketing at cybersecurity firm CloudMask. Jacques, I wonder if you could leave us with a forecast, a prediction into 2018 and beyond. This year, we saw the rise of DDoS attacks. We saw ransomware. Those are nothing new, but they really hit enterprise companies uh, in the heart and in the wallet. What can we anticipate in 2018 and beyond? Well, the way that, I, the way that we see it is uh, DDoS and ransomware is, is a very high nuisance factor to the organization. The, the stealing of theft has serious economic impact to not only businesses, but uh, countries in general. So IP theft, uh, you know, economic output forecast will have a great impact when dealing nation to nation on trade agreements. Uh, so in our case, we see that as the, one of the biggest threats is that from a dollars and cents perspective, you know, in information stealing or kind of you know breaches of information is one of the serious ones but it also has that kind of flavor of a victimless crime that if you just simply stole some information on a server somewhere nobody sees the direct benefit whereas a ransomware attack you, know, you immediately have to do action this for us is kind of one of those you know unknown threats it's in the medical world they call stress as the silent killer we see cyber, th uh, cyber thieves as the unknown within the cybersecurity world.